Hello there everyone and welcome to another UXW Bill product review video. Yes, I know it seems as though I'm making an awful lot of these, but guess what? If you want to watch new UXW Bill videos, then you have to watch the ones I choose to make. And if you'd rather not, well, please just wait patiently. Whatever you're interested in will almost certainly come back around for you to view again. And of course there's always my back catalog. Getting past all of that though, I was recently contacted by the folks at Kaiweet's Tools. They had seen a video review where I talked about a competing infrared thermal imaging camera and they offered to let me review their KTI W01 model camera. Now as always, although this is a sponsored product review and Kaiweet's sent the camera to me free of charge, I told them as always that I would only review it on the condition that I was allowed to be completely honest about my findings with the product. So you can be sure that this review will be as impartial as I can possibly make it. I also had the unfortunate circumstance of recently breaking the only camera tripod I can find right now. So if the camera moves around a little bit or heaven forbid even falls over, well, now, now you know why. The nice folks at Kai Wheats haven't bugged me about the time it's taken to get this review made, and I suspect the only reason for that has to do with the fact that it's presently near to the Lunar New Year holiday, which of course won't last forever, and when it concludes, I suspect they will be back in the office and asking me just where my review is. So I'd better go ahead and get this done. They did ask me to keep this fairly short, at 8 to 15 minutes. They also asked that I focus on using this for electronics diagnosis and repair. You will certainly see some of that later in the video, but I have decided to review it more thoroughly than that by pointing at random things all over various places just so you can get an, a more accurate idea of how it performs and whether or not it's a product that you would like to buy. So let's go ahead and open up this box. It's a very nice box. It's got a magnetic clasp here on this end. And of course here on the other side it has a summary of what you'll find inside. Power adapter, there's a carrying case, hard shell, which is quite nice, and also the camera itself. Uses a USB-C connection, as pretty much every modern item should. Here on the back of the box it talks about some of the features that are offered, and also has a row of checkmark boxes indicating which part of the world this camera was destined for. This is, of course, the United States model. So we'll go ahead and pop this open. This is such a nice box that you might actually want to store the tool in it. The first thing we find is this little cardboard packet here. This contains the operator's manual for the camera. Try to make sure I'm keeping this all in frame. I'm sitting underneath the camcorder on the tripod so I can't really tell for sure. Here's the manual. It covers several languages. It covers the basics pretty well. I did mention to the folks at Kai Wheats that as I read this I found some passages that I thought were confusing or poorly worded. They responded to me and said that of course they are not situated in the United States and therefore they are also not native English speakers but they would be interested in seeing any corrections or amplifications that I might propose as concerns the manual. I certainly do intend to share some things with them that I think could be phrased a little more clearly a little more smoothly, such as it may be. But I would also have to wonder just how hard would it be to get someone who is fluent in both English and Chinese to write the manual based on the specifications and capabilities of the product. Speaking of the product, here it is right now. This is a very large carrying case that it comes in. Might be a little awkward to carry this around. Here's my hand for scale, just to give you an idea. But unlike the competing camera that I reviewed previously, this is a hard shell case, and I really think that's a nice touch. Of course, you'll find the camera itself in here. There's also a little mesh net over here that you could use to store the charging cable, the power adapter, and any other things you might want to keep around, such as the instruction manual for the camera. And then rounding out the collection of items inside the box, Go ahead and dump this out. It'll probably work a little bit better that way. We have not only a little power adapter for the purpose of charging the camera, 
I think it's a little bit lightweight to be completely honest with you, but I suppose that it is entirely adequate to do the job. I'll be honest with you when I say that I have not used it. I actually have a plethora of USB-C chargers around here, so I simply used one of those. However, watch the video description in case I should discover anything interesting about that charging adapter. You also get this USB-A to C cable. This can plug in not only to the charger itself, but you can also use it with a computer to collect stored images and video from this camera. Like the camera that I reviewed previously, this Kaiwitz model is also capable of taking pictures and recording videos. So there we've had a look at what's in the box. Let's take a look at the imager itself. One of the first things that I would like to point out as, con as concerns the imager itself, if I can even continue talking smoothly, is the presence of this different colored plastic in the handle. This actually opens up to reveal a user replaceable lithium battery. I believe they used an 18650 cell, which is very common. You can certainly get one of those anywhere that uh, batteries are sold. But as it happens, there's a special wiring connector on the end of it. Again, you could transfer that to a new battery. I actually posed the question to the Kaiwitz representative. I said, will replacement batteries for this imager be available? They indicated that yes, they would be available in future, but are not presently available at this time. There's also computer software that comes with this imager. You can use that to analyze the stored images that you take. I will not be reviewing that software in this video. If there's interest in my doing so, I may very well choose to make a video about that in future. So with the camera out of the box and all charged up and ready to go, we'll flip open the lens cover here and we'll go ahead and turn it on. It goes through the power on process. While it's doing that, we'll take a look at some of the things that are present on the camera. We have not only the infrared camera lens, but also a lens for a visible light camera that the competing imager did not have. This is a trigger button that allows you to start recording videos or to take a still picture. It performs both functions at once. If you simply click the trigger button, the camera will ask you if you'd like to store the photo and you can use this arrow pad down here to choose whether or not you'd like to do so, followed by pressing the Enter key. If, on the other hand, you'd like to record a video, you simply press and hold, and it will prompt you to start recording. And now we're actually taking a video of what the camera happens to see. To stop, we press and hold the trigger again, and it says that the recording has come to an end. Somewhat curiously, this does not have a tripod mount. I could see that being a very handy feature. Maybe not something that you'd use all of the time, but definitely something that I think Kaiwitz should have included. And I did, in fact, make this known to them. On the built-in display, we have a temperature readout up here. We have the emissivity setting. I'm probably not pronouncing that very well, but <laughs> this is live unscripted video, folks. You may need to change this based on the type of surface whose temperature you are examining. And then roaming around the screen here, we have little targets showing the hottest temperature, the coolest temperature, and the temperature that is being detected in the center of the frame. You can also see that the maximum temperature is displayed down here, as well as the minimum temperature, and then there is a time clock over here in the lower right-hand corner. So that pretty much rounds out everything that's on the display. There are various options in the configuration menu that will let you turn those settings on and off as you desire if you don't want all of these things floating around. You can also change the temperature measurement, the unit of measurement that's used, and there's a setting that allows you to select either a lower temperature scale or a higher temperature scale depending upon what you have in mind to measure. Let's go ahead and just take a quick look at some of the settings. To access the majority of the settings, you simply have to press the menu key, and then you get a list of options over here from the middle of the screen down to the lower left corner. One of the first options, we're not going to go into detail on everything here, but I'll hit the highlights, is the image correction setting. This allows you to adjust how both the visible and infrared cameras are aligned with one another. 
Now I have noticed at times with this camera that I've been in situations where I was unable to achieve satisfactory alignment of the image between the two cameras. I don't consider that a show-stopping defect, but it's certainly something worth noting. There are settings for photos. You press the Enter key to get into the submenu. You can review them or choose to delete them all. We'll press this backward pointing arrow key to break out of that menu. You can do the same thing with videos. You can check on them or delete them all. It is a little bit of a limitation that you can only delete all the videos from the camera, but I hardly consider that to be a major problem. You can, of course, change the color palette that is used. There are several choices. You can get a spectrum option. The default is iron. There's also a cool option, a white, and a black option. And these differ in how the maximum temperatures reported by the camera, both hot and cold, are displayed. I think most people will probably want to use the iron color scheme, and in fact that is what I chose when I was making the demonstration pictures and videos for this review. There's also the emissivity settings. This allows you to specify what kind of surface you are looking at, and you can even choose a custom setting if none of the presets seem like they're doing the job. Then of course there is a settings menu. This governs things such as automatic shutdown, display brightness, language, the unit of measurement, despite the degree Celsius indication, I presently have it set to Fahrenheit. You also get to choose the temperature range, how the time is shown, you can set the clock, turn the various crosshair spots on and off, as previously mentioned, and of course you can view information about the camera's software version. This camera shipped with version 1.4.1, in visiting the Kaiwitz website, I have not found any source for firmware downloads. I would assume it probably can be upgraded by the end user. I did not happen to ask the Kaiwitz representative about this at first, but I will certainly be doing so, and I will post that information about my findings in the video description. When you are done configuring, of course, you can simply break out of the menu, and you're ready to start using the thermal imaging camera to determine the temperature of whatever you're interested in inspecting. I am pleased to report that this camera's firmware is of much better quality and far more polished than that of the model from a competing brand that I reviewed previously. The Kaiwitz camera has only the one connector on it, and that's the USB-C port that's used for either charging or data exchange with an attached computer if you desire to do so. The USB-C port, when attached to a computer, offers only the ability to view the contents of the internal storage. This particular camera does not appear to function as a USB video class webcam type device to facilitate live image display with an attached computer. I am not sure if the USB-C port supports anything like the DisplayPort alternate mode that would facilitate the connection of an external monitor. I would be very surprised to learn that it did. However, this is something I will be testing, and I will update the video description accordingly. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some test footage, both still photos and videos, that I shot with this camera of various heat-producing items.
It's time to go ahead and close up this product review. So would I recommend this camera? Yes, I believe that I would. I've been using it extensively over the past several weeks. So far I have not found any major problems with it. It performs exactly as advertised. I really do like the feature that allows you to blend the images to varying degrees between both the infrared thermal and the visible light cameras. There has been a little bit of odd behavior here and there, but nothing that was show-stoppingly disastrous. The only two instances I can think of have to do with the occasional image misalignment between the two cameras that sometimes exceeds the ability of the internal adjustments to compensate. And sometimes, if you exceed this camera's temperature measurement range, or its limits, it will continue to read in excess of its limits for a short period of time, but sometimes the images, the image just completely washes out to nothing. It's really hard to find fault with the camera though because it is operating in excess of its claimed specifications at that point. And as previously noted, if you are quick, you can get a usable temperature measurement out of it. Down in the video description, which you should always be reading on a UXW Bill video, you will actually find a link to purchase this camera if you would like to buy one. The folks at Kai Wheats are also going to supply me with a discount code. I would also tell you that at some point down the road I will be doing a long-term update on this camera. We'll find out how it's been holding up as I use it from time to time. As always, thank you for watching. I certainly hope that this product review has been informative and useful to you. And I would certainly welcome your constructive commentary if you happen to have any.